Hello everybody, welcome to Marketing Analytics course. This is week 2 and I am Dr. Shagat Chatterjee from Vijisom IIT Kharagpur who will be taking this course. So in the week 2 we will talk about what consumers want. So this is this will be the overall topic of this particular uh, uh, week and there will be as usual 6 sessions and we will discuss that how we can find out what consumers want. So to start with the first basic marketing thing that we have to understand is that uh, there are certain concepts called uh, need, want and desire or demand which is there in marketing 101 and, that, and these three things are different and for a marketer these three things are very important that why these things are different and what I, ha I should focus on and why I sh what I should not focus on and so on. So, so for need want and demand. So the first basic thing that I want to focus on is that what is a need. So a need is all the basic necessities of a human being which is required to survive. For example, the physical health, the food, the shelter, safety, uh, financial support. So initially we used to talk about food, shelter and uh, probably uh, the clothing that we wear. But rather than the, uh, instead of that there will be much more uh, basic things that is required probably a little bit of connectivity uh, as it has been written here mental well being quality education now all of these things have become a part of our basic need. Now this is our basic need and we need this to survive but there is another concept called want so basic need is something which is without which you will not survive. On the other hand, there is something called want, which is actually a little bit higher version of need and it is probably sometimes opposite to need. It is not something that you will not survive without of it. So you will actually survive without your want as well, but still you probably, uh, probably love to have that, love to uh, consume that or love to have those kind of services with you. So that is called one. For example, let us say I have given a picture of a uh, baby here, a kid and uh, for him food, quality food, good food is something that is his need. But baby wants candy, that candy that he is asking for, he or she is asking for is something that is his want. So without that candy he will survive but still he wants that because that is something he finds uh, pleasurable or probably something that is, uh, that gives, uh, attracts him more or her more and etc etc. So that is the basic difference between need and want. For example, in case of a, when we travel, uh, let us say a, a safety, a safe uh, place to sleep at night is something that is a basic need. On the other hand, a hotel with a comfortable bed and a good bath and, and uh, running hot water and Wi-Fi facility and etc etc is your want. So if, without the comfortable bed, without the running water, you will still survive, you will still will be able to travel, but your travel experience will not be that good. So majorly marketers focus on this want part and they want to convert this want to a desire or demand part. So desire with a price tag is something called demand. What is a desire? So when, when a want is targeted towards a specific thing, then that becomes a desire and that has certain price tag with it that becomes a desire. For example, let us say I am as I told that I will be traveling and I will be traveling and I am looking for various kinds of product options and etc or, or probably in this case hotel options and etc where I will stay and this Hilton Tokyo hotel has uh, rooms of different quality. Okay. And you will see that the rooms quality has slowly improved over uh, one step to other step. Now hold, the, all of them are provided by uh, this Hilton Tokyo Hotel. Now the one is at $432, the another is $321 and another is almost so $267 which is very low, the value deal is $267. Now what they are trying to say is that they are trying to see that which one of this particular, uh, particular uh, products that they have and associated prices that they have which one will be having higher desire for the customer. Customer will want to have which one and if the price and the desire matches, if 
the willingness to pay of the customer is matching with the desire, uh, so uh, matching with the price, then the desire will convert to a demand. So he wants to stay in this, the last one, which is let's say a King Janitor Suite Hilton room. He wants to stay in that. That is his desire that I would want to. So, so good hotel is something that is a need. Uh, lots of facilities in the hotel is the want. When that want is targeted toward a particular solution, which is in this case, this King, King Junior Suite uh, Hilton, that is a... Uh, uh, probably that is a desire and when the desire converts to willingness to pay of the consumer that willingness to pay if that matches with the price that is quoted here for $32 then that becomes a demand if the willingness to pay is lower or equal to that particular price that you are quoting that becomes a demand now why this story is important because this story is important to know that what converts a need to a want, what converts a want to a desire and how to make that desire to a demand by giving the right price for that particular desire. All of these things is important for a co company to know and that is where the what customers want, what customer values this kind of story comes up. So, what are the various sources of information from which you can know that what customers want? So there are lots of places where customers themselves say that what I want, what I don't want and etc. One of the major source of that is probably the, the qualitative survey that you take. Oftentimes you take surveys, qualitative, sometimes quantitative as well, all form of surveys that you take. Uh, to say that whether you are happy with us, if you, you are not happy, then what is uh, the place where you are not happy, what kind of features you, you are asking for, uh, what are you looking for, what are you not looking for, all of these details you can ask the customer. So that is the first way, basically simply straightforward ask the customers what you want, what you don't want, what you like, what you dislike. Sometimes you do not ask, somebody else asks for you. For example, uh, let's say the review websites like Amazon has all the reviews uh, listed there. Sometimes they are verified customer and Amazon asks those customers that okay, can you, do you want to put a review. Sometimes a customer who is not verified customer has bought from some other source can also go and put their review there. So that is an accumulation of lots of reviews, uh, sometimes by verified customer, sometimes by not so verified customers. So that is also a major source of information. A product company can actually go through all those product reviews that has been posted there and can get an idea that what are the things that they want to, they should improve, what are the things that they should not improve or they are okay with and what has higher importance, what has lower importance and etc. And we will do a small case study. We have started doing a small case study in the last week also. We will continue on that. And we will do later point of time more case studies on the text part of the uh, review also to find out that what matters, what is something that customers want. Review websites can be tripadvisor.com also. So tripadvisor.com as I was telling or a lot of other hotel reviews where both quantitative data and qualitative data, both type of data is collected. So if you have both type of data, you can actually mix and match quantitative techniques and qualitative techniques, probably uh, uh, text mining techniques like, like let's say, um, uh, probably natural language processing as well, along with your quantitative techniques, all form of quantitative techniques, regression, econometric techniques or machine learning techniques, that you can, all of them, you can combine them together and to create insight. So at the later part of this particular course, we will try to do that, how that is done. But here also we will see some of the easy ways to do the same thing. It can be the complaints website also. So consumercomplaints.com or consumercomplaints.in. If you go to those kind of websites, you will find out how people are giving, proposing complaints. Now complaints are generally negative reviews. There will be nothing positive there in most of the cases. But you also will know that what are the major reasons for which customer are complaining. And there can be online forums also where people discuss with each other. It's not only... Uh, for example, what consumers want in that space, online forum comes very handy when you are doing a product improvement. For example, let's say salesforce.com, there is a 
let us say uh, forum, online forum, users forum and users forums are there for all other various kinds of uh, various kinds of tools that are there. For example, Microsoft's Power BI or let us say IBM's Watson, all of these guys will have their own online forums where the users will actually talk about what kind of improvements has to be done, what kind of improvements is required, what they are facing difficulties and etc. So, one user posts, another user gives the reply of that and etc. Now, if you can sometimes one user gives a, a product recommendation or improvement recommendation, other users come and vote there. So, from also from those kind of information, you can get an idea that what customers is asking for. Now, the second part, this is where the customer themselves either by you ask you asking or they are on their own motivation, they are expressing their requirements, their needs, but not always is something that happens. So, sometimes you have to track customers behavior, what they are doing, what they are not doing to find out that what customers want. For example, one of the basic thing that we do here in this case is choice models and we will discuss in length about choice model. Choice model is nothing but quantitative modeling about customers choice as simple as that. Now, customers can choose many things, customer can choose probably whether I will continue with this service or not. So, let us say you have taken a Netflix subscription and Netflix want to know that out of all my customers, let us say 1 million customers, which of the customers are more have more chance of reneging that means they have more chance of not renewing their subscription in the next year and what are the drivers of that what is the reason what customers are asking for which they do not have that's why they will churn out if they can find out that then they can actually create designs they can create pro uh, products they can create offerings which is targeted towards those customers who are trying to churn out. So, here it is a binomial model, binomial because there are two options available either customer stays or customer goes out, 1 or 0. Now, it can be multinomial model also. For example, let us say customer has 3 choices, let us say customer can or, or more than uh, uh, 3 choices, let us say customer can stay where he is, customer can upgrade, customer can downgrade or customer can churn out. So, customer has 4 choices, today I have a subscription of the medium plan, I can upgrade to a premium plan or I can downgrade myself to a basic plan or I can stop using the product at all. So, there are 4 options available to this customer in this kind of a situation and it, it is available for many other for WordPress let us say, WordPress has lots of plans, if you are a, if you are a, a user of wordpress.com where you can create your uh, create your all your uh, websites in a part in the platform rather than downloading the uh, uh, downloading the uh, I would say codes and etc. You want to just do a drag and drop kind of designing of a website. You can use WordPress.com and WordPress.com has multiple features along with multiple pricing options. And as more and more features comes up, the pricing options are also there and it, the prices goes up. Now, you can upgrade, you can downgrade, you can unsubscribe to certain products, you can subscribe to certain products, all these options are there. When all those options are there in your hand and you want to model consumers behavior and you want to know from that information that what consumers are asking for, you have to do a multinomial mod choice modeling that is also a part of our uh, of, of what we have, whatever we will cover and I will come to that. And the third way which is a combination of the previous things that I told is something where I am doing an experiment. Experiment means I am creating the situation, it is not a natural uh, occurrence that is happening. I am creating situations for the consumers and then I am asking the consumer that in this situation how you will behave. So, I am tracking his behavioral data only or his preference data only, but I am not directly asking that what you wa want or what you do not want or I am not directly tracking his behavior in an actual situation because not sometimes we try to uh, create certain situations which is not available in the market till now. Let us say you are trying to introduce a new product. So, if the customer will ask or ha has, a, has a need or they will like this new product or not, some new features you are trying to add on. 
that new features whether customers will appreciate that particular feature or not you cannot get that from this behavioral data the option number two you cannot get that why because that you know, offering is not there in the market if that offering is not there in the market you have no idea whether the customers will like it or not so then you have to create situations for the customers for some sample customers that okay i have created this situation now you tell me whether you like this or not so that expand that part is called consumer experiments one of them is conjoint analysis where we create multiple uh, options for the consumer and then ask the consumer to either rate or rank or give a choice about those particular options so these are various things that are there in today's session session number one of week two we will talk about the first part and that too with quantitative data not with qualitative data and then we will in the next sessions we will talk about the rest of the parts so i will come back in your uh, files you will find out that there is a week two uh, s1 week two uh, session one dot r file i will ask you to open that So it's opening. So as usual, when we start, I would ask you close everything other than this one, clean your console, clean your global environment, everything is clean. So we will work with the same data set that we were working before, the same hotel review data. So if I just put the session directory to source file location, make sure that here is the ho sample hotel data file and here is my w2s1 file they are holding up in the same folder so i i can now read my data set and my data set has 942 observations of uh, 11 variables this is what we have done in the last class uh, we will also find out the missing value we will also find out the outlier and remove them so these codes are actually taken from the last class so we will select this and run it directly and then I will try to compare between the attributes. Remember, there are six attributes. If you remember that there were six attributes, and those attributes were uh, rating value, location, sleep quality, value means value for money, uh, location, sleep quality, rooms, cleanliness, and service. These are the six aspects, and I want to know their relative importance. So one thing is they are all 1 to 5 point scale so I can directly run a review but sometimes the means are different no. So to make sure and probably the standard deviation of these variables are also different to make sure they are comparable we change it to their scaled form. So I change both the y variable and the 6x variables to their scaled form. So scaled means standardized form standardized means the z is equal to x minus mu by sigma so that is the standardized form so where z is equal to x minus mu by sigma if it is a population and z is equal to x minus x bar by s if it is a sample so whatever so you find out that and you find out the corresponding z value so once i find out the z value what i will do is i will be doing a regression so this is the regression we have done before where i have taken review overall rating as my y axis and all the six things one by one so location plus sleep quality plus rooms plus cleanliness plus service and so on as my x variables so once i do that and run that i get a data i get a result and the result is given here and that is the same result i actually brought out here and now i want you to see this result carefully so i have just run that regression and uh, the f statistic is 189.6 uh, degrees of freedom is 6,865 and p value is much lower than 0 0.05 so we are okay with this regression results previously we have also discussed about the correlation so correlation is fine and then the adjusted r squared is 0 0.5651 in a marketing context it is good enough uh, the data size is 900 so it's not very big data that I can say that okay all these results are meaningless or 
uh, we have to further probe in, in a greater depth that whether it is coming up to be uh, any making sense or not. On the other hand, I can see here carefully that the most important factor is value for money. Value for money has the, so all of the, all the six factors are significant first of all. Location is less, uh, I will have probably I would say that even the uh, T value is lower than the other ones. Uh, so, the p value is also lower and the coefficient value which is 4.994 into 10 to the power minus 2 means almost 0 0.05. So, that is 0 0.05 means that is the lowest out of all of them. So, other but the highest one is the value for money which is 0.228 almost 0.28. So, 0.28 is the highest one. So, here it is 0.28. So, this one is the highest one and then actually 0.05 this one is the lowest one and then you can find out that which one is more important than the other one. So, this much basic information I can get that what customers want the most important thing that the customer wants is value for money and then the next important thing is service, the next important thing is rooms, room quality. Then the next important thing is cleanliness, sleep quality and so on. So, I will get a idea about what customers are asking for. Now, my question next question comes up is that whether these anything else matter other than the six attribute. So, these are let us say these are reviews like these are actually something that customer have experienced before they come back and talk about this. So, we have to know that whether there is something else also that customers are asking for or not. So, the second thing that we are asking is does your co-traveler has any effect on your overall satisfaction? So, whom you are traveling with, now this is not something that the, that the company can control, but company should have an idea that whether the co-traveler, existence of a co-traveler might affect customers satisfaction or not or what customers is asking for or not. To run that, we done another regression. If you just come down in this file, does your quota wheeler has any impact? So, what are the quota wheelers? I find out the levels of travel type. So, line number 28, I will run and these are the levels that are coming up. So, if you see carefully, this is as a couple. So, you are traveling as a couple or you are traveling on business or you are traveling solo or with family or with friends. So, on business is business travel all other four travels are probably leisure travels and then in the leisure travels also you can travel alone. You can travel with as a couple means with your spouse or you can travel with your family if you have kids and parents and etc together or you can travel with your friends. So, these are the five possible options are there and I just add that the review type I just add here in the regression. Now, regression in this particular case, in many other softwares, you have to actually create dummy variables and you have to create, if you know, you have to create four dummy variables out of this five. Why four dummy variables? Because you have to check, take care of the multicollinearity issue. So, let us say I have, I have, let us say x1, so, so one factor variable fv, which has three levels l1, l2, l3. So, l1, l1, l1. L2, L2, L2 and L3, L3, L3 something like that and I create L1, L2 and L3. So, the first one will be 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. The second one will be something like this and third one will be 6 zeros and then 1, 1, 1. Now, if you just add them up L1 plus L2 plus L3 this is always 1 this is always one for all of these guys. So, you cannot take L1, L2, L3 together in the model, you have to drop any one of them. So, you choose which one you want to drop and based on that you create a dummy variable to find out that which one is, which, which one has an effect and which one does not have an effect. Now, here in this particular case, this guy will actually create the dummy variable on its own, you do not have to do that, that is the I would say advantage of using a factor variable in your model. So, once I run this, I get certain results again and this is the same result I have kept here. 
Now understand the result carefully. So the previous ones are still there. Even here, rating value for money is more important than other things. But the two inform extra information that I got is that there are four new factors are coming up. So remember, there are there are five factors, five types of review time. One has been dropped, and other four has been reported here. So business solo with family and with friends, and probably the one that he has been dropped is with as a couple. So as a couple, so as a couple is the level which is the first level, which is probably uh, even in a in a uh, nomenclature wise in the in a uh, alphabetically it is the first one. So that's why it gets dropped. So this is something that R does alphabetically whichever is the uh, lowest level, so the first level that will get dropped. If you want to change what it what gets dropped, you have to change that particular level alphabetical order or you have to interpret it properly. So that interpretation is important that is what we are going to do. So if you have idea about how to interpret dummy variables, it is not something that is new. So here what I am trying to say? The first thing that I am trying to say is in comparison to as a couple which got dropped, these solo guys and with friend guys are insignificant means that they are similar to them, they are not different from them. But business and family will have lower satisfaction score minus 0.18 which is significant and minus 0.13 which is also significant. So people who are traveling for business or people who are traveling with family they might have lower rating, lower overall satisfaction level than people who are traveling solo or with friends or as a couple. So you can say that people who are traveling in smaller group are most satisfied guys. People who are traveling with their family is the second best and the least satisfied guys will be the business travelers. So you have to take, you have to pamper more towards the business travelers then towards the guys who are family travelers and for other guys who are traveling with friends or solo and etc they find out their own corner and you might not have to focus on them much now this is a very interesting finding and this is something that you the the, the customers the, the hotel companies can actually learn from the behavior of the customers now another thing that becomes important is that whether the distance, so remember these are reviews and the reviews are posted long back. So, whether, so the memory will play a role. So, whether the distance, the time distance between the date of the travel and date of the review. So, you traveled on January and you wrote a review on June, the six months, whether that has any impact or not because that will actually impact on whether you have anything, any, you, what kind of things you remember or what kind of reviews you post and etc. So in a, in a easy way we will say that, so let us see first of all uh, to do that you have to see the structure of the data. In the structure of the data you will see that there are two variables that we have. One is the review uh, month of visit which is a factor variable and another is date of review which is also a factor variable. So we have to convert these two in a date variables and we, I discussed about previously that there are another form of a vector which is called date. So the first thing that I do is I change it to character variable. So I write data dollar date of review 1, I am creating a new variable is as character date of review. So whatever was date of review, I change it to its character form. So if I run this and then show you what these guys are, these guys are nothing but the character forms. Now here there are two types of dates, two formats of dates that has been written. One is the month, day and year written as dash and then another is probably month, day and year written as slash. So I have to create this thing. So there is a function called as date, as dot date. You can go to help and you can go to Google and find out how as dot date works. So as dot date, if I write let us say, let us say 01, 01, 2019 and I want them, so 01 let us say 11, 2019, so 1st November 2019 and I want this guy to read it as a date, I have to write the format 
exactly whatever the text is corresponding format I have to write. So here, what is the format? The format is actually, if you check carefully, the format is The format is dead dd, then mm, then yyyy. This is the format, right? In common sense. So in here, what we write is percentage d, percentage m, and percentage capital Y. So this is the syntax. Why it has been written like this? So I will go and do it right, right, like that. So percentage d percentage m and percentage capital Y. If I write that, now it has been read as see the format has changed and this is the format. Now this guy is actually reading this part as a date. Similarly, so y percentage y, y is not something else. To learn that, we have to go to the health file of as date. So some basic things is like this that as date will ask you if you are written 2019 correspondingly you have to write percentage capital Y. If it is only 19, you have to write percentage small y. Similarly, if it is date, date is generally uh, double digit. So, you have to write percentage D for date, for a date, let us say 0, 01 or 3, 1 or so on. And then for month, if it is A, U, G, August, you have to write percentage B. And if it is A, U, G, U, S, T, full thing, you have to write percentage B. It is, let us say month, second month, 0, 2, you have to write percentage M. So, M for month, D for date. So, that is something. So, these are some basic ones. You can go to the time date formatting and you can find out the other ones as well. And the other things like slash or dot and etc. has to be absolutely what is written in the text. So, here if I have two forms, I can, I first change the slash ones and then the dot ones. So, I write data review 2 is equal to as dot date data review 1 and what is the format I am asking percentage m means month slash date slash year, year in full form. So, if I run, run that and now want to see data review 2, you will see there are lots, some of them are dates coming properly and then for the others lots of n is coming. Why n is coming? Because some of them are in the dash form, they are not in slash form. So, this guys is giving wrong result, that is why. So, for that what I have to do is, I will be changing this thing in. So, I am writing for those guys where it is in a, where is data, data review 2, data, date of review 2 is coming as in a, change it to its date form and the date form is corresponding to this. So, if you run it carefully, if you see the care, see it carefully, now if I run this and then if I want to see data review 2, all the dates are coming properly. So, the any ones are replaced with the new format. So, first I format the slash ones, then I format the dash ones and then I put it together. So, this is the date of review. The same thing I do it for the month of review. Now, in case of month of review, month of uh, travel, if you see, the month of travel only has the month, it does not say which date. To, to be safe, we put one dash. So, for August 2014, for August 2014, I change it to 1 August 2014, first date of that particular month, I change it. So, that it, I make sure that everything has, gives some value. Now, it will create certain bias, but we do not have information, so we have to do our best. So, I have done that. So, how did I do that? I have first changed it to character as usual and then I use a paste formula. So, what is paste is joins two text. The first text is one dash, the second text is whatever was there in that particular column which is data dollar month visit one and separator means whether there will be certain gap in. So, separator is equal to nothing double quotes nothing written under the double quotes means that you just paste them together. You do not put anything below. If I do not give that, it will write one dash and then a space and then the rest. So, that is something that is not happening here. So, data dollar month visit one. If I just run this, 
and then if I want to see what is what I am getting, you will see at the end of the day it is 1 August 14, 1 September 14, 1 July 14. So, 1 has been added. Now, it is still a character. I have to change it to its date form by writing this formula. So, percentage d dash percentage small b because a u g is written and this percentage small y because dash 14 is written, dash 15 is written, not 2014. So, I run that. So, if I run that, what happens is I get two date columns and now the time distance between these two is the date of review which happens uh, closer today minus date of visit. So, visit happens first and then the review. So, review minus visit. So, that gives me the time distance. So, if I just plot the time distance for some of the values it is coming in a because the date of travel is not given, but for many of them the time distance is available. So, for the I will just blindly remove the in ones, the not available ones. So, from 872 we got 806 which is around 66 observations got dropped, still we have enough data to handle with and I only thing that I do is I introduce a time dist variable here in the model. And when I introduce this time dist variable and run the regression, I get the result which looks like this. You see the result? The result looks like this. The additional information by doing all of these things, the additional information that I am getting is this time dist. So, I am running a regression between the keeping all the other variables that was already there in the model, I am not disturbing them. I am introducing a one more variable which is the date of your travel minus the date of your review or the other way review minus travel or at that time distance I am bringing in and that is giving us significant it's a small but significant result. What does that mean? A uh, time distance increases your satisfaction increases. That means, the later you give the review, the more satisfied results are coming up. What is the suggestion if that is something that happens? Should we actually delay the review seeking? If you seek the review, should you seek the review very close to the travel date or should you seek the review very much away from the travel date is something that is a important question. And uh, this is something you can actually go and search in Google Scholar uh, by my name. We have a paper on this. Uh, me and uh, uh, Professor uh, Aruna Divya Tatavati from IIM Ahmedabad and Professor Piyush Sharma from Curtin University. We actually have a paper on similar kind of data and similar kind of analysis we have done to find out that we, we are trying to question that what customers want first of all, whether they are focusing on outcome oriented factors or probably service or process oriented factors when they go to a service and whether this preference of process versus outcome changes uh, depending on whom you are traveling with or depending on what is the time distance after which you are giving your review or depending on what kind of expertise level you have whether you are a avid traveler or you are a probably naive traveler all of these things will have an impact on what consumers want and what consumers do not want. So, you can go and actually read that paper. Uh, I, I can actually share uh, a, a probably the, the older version of that particular paper. Uh, I, will, I can make it available. You can read the paper and you can, you can know about more about what we are trying to discuss. So, that is all for session 1. We will come back in session 2 with some new information. Thank you.